Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of the Sir Alex Ferguson Challenge with Sheffield United. In today's episode we're going to face two really really important games in Newcastle and Burnley. They are both sides who are in and around the sort of position that we are and if we can get some major points from these, hopefully about four, we'll be sitting pretty. There has of course been some fixtures that we need to review since the last time we met and as you'll notice I've got a new skin what is actually a dark mode and not the fake dark mode that football manager comes with. Nil-nil against Aston Villa. They were bottom of the league when we played them. We did have the better of the game without creating too many key opportunities and unfortunately we couldn't get the win so we had to settle for just one point. And then a disappointing away defeat against Leicester City. Jimmy Vardy gave them the lead inside 14 minutes. Ender Stevens did equalise for us just after half time but unfortunately we couldn't hold on for the point as Jimmy Vardy gave Leicester the lead once again in the 73rd minute. We then had a home tie against Everton in which you know they did probably have the better of the game but we managed to come out of this one with another nil nil draw. Another clean sheet which is a nice thing but the goals have definitely started to dry up in a major way over the past eight games or so but another point closer to safety I'll take it. And then finally we've got our shooting boots on this time at home against Watford and we managed to win this one three to McGoldrick put us ahead. Luke Freeman doubled our lead but unfortunately, Joe Pedro then scored, and then they scored again to equalise in the 64th minute. But thankfully, a Craig Dawson on goal in the 71st gave us our first three points, and I, I think this was our first win in nine matches. So as you can see here, ever since just before January, we've been on an awful, awful run in terms of games. But getting that win against Watford has finally picked up the squad, and hopefully it can lead us into the final part of this season. And as you can see, we are now seven points clear from 18th place Norwich. We're on pretty much a similar amount of games as all the rest of the team, so nothing to worry about there. If we can get a couple of more wins, I think, I think it might be enough to keep us in the Premier League. So that brings us to today's match against Newcastle and Burnley, the first of which is Newcastle away from home. As you can see, they are in 17th position, six points behind us. So if we we'll get a win here, we'll just further stretch our... Uh, it will margin against the bottom place teams which will be ideal. We then play Burnley after that who are only one place above us in the league with us having a game in hand as well. So, you know, two key games. If we can get six points here, I'll be absolutely delighted. So this is how we're going to line up for today's game against Newcastle. Henderson in goal, Egan, Kerrer, O'Connell in the defence with Baldock and Ender Stevens being our wing-backs. Oliver Norwood and John Fleck in the centre with Luke Freeman in behind McBurney and Lise Moose set. Billy Sharp I would love to start a mob, but he scored two goals in 19 Premier League starts. You know, he's 34 years old. I might as well give the game time to Lise Mousset, who scored four in ten, only 10 starts, although a lot more off the bench. But he's younger, he's got the pace, he's got a bit of potential as well, so we're going to give him the start. Newcastle come on us with a very similar formation to us, except they're playing wide men instead of the second striker and attacker midfielder. Um, pretty standard side, I don't see any major changes there in terms of new signings. So it's pretty much the same side you would face against Newcastle any other save. Uh, you've got to keep an eye out for the likes of St. Maximin who's got absolutely fantastic pace and some good ability on him. Um, I'm a little bit surprised Newcastle are as far down in the league as they are. They do have some really, really talented players, particularly the likes of Joel Linton and St. Maximin. But um, yeah, let's kick it off and hopefully get three points. So Newcastle kick off shooting from right to left in this first half. Early highlight now, Moose sets in behind. The shot is blocked and I think that's going to be it. Another highlight now. Newcastle coming down the left-hand side with Dummett. Switches the play to Yedlin. It's a very, very choppy game. Like I'm going to tell you what I'm going to do, lads. I'm going to do it 2D for now. Um, I look to maybe update my drivers or something on my graphics card. It shouldn't be this bad. But uh, we'll go down memory lane and go back to 2D just for now as we go close there as Dubravka saves for Newcastle. Another highlight now. Ender Stevens coming down. That left hand side for us finds Fleck. The ball switched, but we give it away to Willems, who can find Longstaff and St. Maximin can break for Newcastle. He's got the pace. He's absolutely done his man number 12 there for us. He gets to the byline, plays it back to Longstaff on the edge. Isaac Hayden takes a strike and he gets his second goal of the season and puts Newcastle ahead 18 minutes in. Not a great start by us by any stretch of the imagination. St. Maximin just a bit too tricky for us down that left hand side. He does well to find the man on the edge of the box and it's a decent finish by Isaac Hayden on the edge. Keeper can do nothing about that. 1-0. Another highlight, Yedlin with the goal there. It doesn't look like it's going to be offside either. An easy, easy free kick 
for Newcastle United and they put themselves 2-0 up. But St. Maximin again causing the issues. Great. It's a great ball. And it's a decent finish by Yadlin as well, beating the keeper at the near post. We are sinking without a trace here. Six points might have been a bit ambitious, I'm starting to think. Baldock though switches the play to Stevens. Yedlin manages to cut it out, but he oh, tries to play back to the keeper. Mousset should probably get us a goal back there and we should be batting this game. But unfortunately, we miss out. Ball's played in again. Yedlin manages to clear. And Newcastle are definitely, definitely playing on the break. They're causing us all sorts of issues when we are high up the pitch. But we managed to pinch it back this time. And there we are. Norwood gives the ball away. And Jonathan's in behind. And he should be putting Newcastle 3-0 up. I know we've had some games where we've been thumped, particularly by the better sides in the league. But this is one of the worst games I think I've seen Sheffield United do since I've been manager. Um, Newcastle United are not doing well in this league. We're matching them in terms of match stats if you were just a purely based on that. But the amount of clear-cut opportunities they've already made in this first half has been a little bit disappointing. Another highlight now, 63 minutes in. The wide player again, once again, causing us issues. Long staff from the edge. And there's his second goal of the season. Assist by Matt Ritchie. And Newcastle are absolutely thumping us 3-0. I wasn't expecting this, I'll not lie to you. Lascelles switches the player out to the left-hand side. Matt Ritchie brings it down. Great first touch. And another long-range strike and completely does us 3-0. We'll look to make a few changes. See who's performing the worst. John Flex not having a great game in the centre midfield. We'll bring on Lundstrom in his place. Lise Moose second come off. We'll give Billy Sharp some game time as well. Um, and we'll leave it at that for now. Come on, boys. Just make this even semi-competitive. Make it 3-2. Just make it like that. Oliver McBurney's trying to get behind, but Lascelles manages to cut it out. We're keeping the pressure on, though. Ender Stevens on the left-hand side. Decent delivery in. It's played in. Goes all the way across to Baldock on the right-hand side. Stevens is there again. And we're just not being clinical with our chances either. They have been super clinical. We haven't. Ten minutes to go. We'll look to make our final substitute of the game. Stevens is struggling on that left-hand side. Going to have to bring on Kieran Freeman as Ziegler is currently injured and not available for the bench. Disappointing game. Um, 3 0 is really, really poor. Can we get one back here? St. Maximum clears only as far as O'Connell. Luke Freeman to Billy Sharp. He comes on, he gets his goal. It looks like it might be offside here. The assistant referee has not moved. It goes to VAR. And what's happening? Oh, it's been disallowed. <laughs> it's not our game, lads. It's not our game. Ball played over the top. Yedlin beats our defensive line. Oh, goes for goal again. Henderson manages to keep him out this time. And there we have it. Full time. Some devastating play by Newcastle United. Completely does us. And unfortunately we fall to a 3-0 defeat. That was an awful game. No stretch of it. As you can see here. We're now we're still 7 points clear from 18th place Norwich. But Newcastle have closed the gap. Um, yeah. Disappointing all round. I'll see you at the Burnley game. Right, we've got to brush that defeat against Newcastle from us and get our heads in the game for the home tie against Burnley. This is how we're lining up. Dean Henderson, Egan, Kerrer, O'Connell. Our back line's pretty solid, along with the wing-backs, Baldock and Stevens. No wooden fleck in the centre. Freeman in behind, McBurney and Musette again. Uh, I might end up bringing Billy Sharp on at some point for Musette if he's not having a great game. We'll get Lundstram. Actually, we'll keep him off the bench. We'll keep Ravel Morrison off the on the bench. You haven't really seen much of him. He's not... Particularly great player on FM20, I'll not lie. And I think we'll be much more better suited to playing against the 4-4-2 than we were against Newcastle's formation last time, which pretty much mirrored ours, but exploited the weaknesses we have on the wing. So we'll see how this goes. Early highlight, one minute in already. Baldock switches the player to Stevens on the left-hand side. He beats his man, he gets past him, but can he get the ball into the box? He's tussling with that number seven. He manages to get it in, but it's clear by Tarkowski. And now, maybe Burnley can break. They can't. Baldock intercepts a pass. He finds Mousset in the box. And at least Mousset gets his seventh goal of the season. And puts Sheffield United 1-0 up inside two minutes. A decent little assist by George Baldock here. I think it was him who intercepts his ball. Here it is. Beats Samu to the ball on the right-hand side. And the ball's played in. First time finish as well. The keeper, he's looking the wrong way, mate. The keeper the ball's that side. But uh, we'll take it. 1-0. Highlight straight from kickoff though. Is it going to be us again? McBurney. He's set away by O'Connell. He's in behind. He's got to be putting them in the back of the net. Big opportunity. Highlights coming thick and fast in this one. Seven minutes in now. Loughton plays the ball in. We we'll managed to get it clear. And Luke Freeman can maybe break for us with Lee Smooset. He's in behind. He's got the pace as well. He just hasn't got the finishing. That's all. 
another highlight. Baldock picks up the ball from a Burnley keeper kick. And Ender Stevens now on the left-hand side gets the ball in. Baldock's out back post. And he hits the side net. And we're knocking on the door. This is a good thing. But are we going to be punished for our missed opportunities? The ball's played in by a good... Uh, I think it went a good monster. And Loughton takes a strike from the edge. And we managed to survive that attack. Highlight now. McNeil gets the ball from good monster. He hits the... I think he gets his head on it and Henderson manages to keep it out. I don't think that was the highlight. We'll stick with it. Luke Freeman pinches the ball from Jack Cork in the centre. Looks like he was brought down there. But Mousset finds Stevens in the box. And what a save that is by Pope. Keeping Burnley in this one. Come on, boys. We need this second goal. Luke Freeman with the corner. Ball's played in. Probably going to lead to nothing here. Or could end up leading to a Burnley goal. Good Munson on this right-hand side. McNeil's in the box. Henderson claims the ball. And we survive once again. Cleverly with the ball played in. Manages to go all the way out and Baldock and come away with it. Jack Cork has not got the pace to keep up with him. Can he get past his man? He gets intercepted but McBurney picks up the loose ball. He's got men in the box now but Cleverly gets back and dispossesses him. Norwood switches the player. Absolutely beautiful pass. Stevens finds Baldock on the right hand side. Moose sets there again and he hits the upright and it goes out. With... <laughs> Listen, this, this usually doesn't end up well but we'll play him well which is the nice thing. And that's going to be it for the first half. We are 1-0 up. Probably should have been a couple of goals each for either side. But I think we definitely had the opportunities and we definitely deserve our lead. Going into the second half. We need to be careful though. They definitely look dangerous on the break. We've got some good wing player with target men. But thankfully we've got them three centre-halves who can hopefully keep their two strikers in check. Pick up with the highlight here. We're playing some nice stuff in the midfield. As long as Norwood doesn't lose this ball... And of course he does, but it's a straight red card for Cleverly. We are in this now. Down to 10 men, Burnley. We're going to go to a more positive mentality, maintain possession, and hopefully be able to completely see out this game. Baldock's had a good game at right wing back, but he is struggling a little bit out there. We'll get Freeman on for him in the right wing back role. Corner for Burnley. And they equalise. <laughs> We're going to go back attacking. Please, not against 10 men. We've had so many good opportunities. And they go down to 10 men. You, you just think that's going to be it. And you're going to get the three points. But Ben Mee gets his head on it. Beats O'Connell in the air. And with only 17 minutes to go, we really need a goal. Ender Stevens now picks up the ball on the left-hand side. Lee Smoussets in the box. It's going to go for goal. Nick Pope was, had him well covered there. If he'd maybe gone to the back post, we might have got a goal there. But another opportunity goes awry. And Burnley come forward this time with Ben May on the left-hand side. We we'll managed to intercept and Luke Freeman can set away Lee Smoussa. Come on, son, put this away. Oh, he's had so many opportunities today. I know he had that one good finish and got us the goal early on. But he's had about three opportunities since then, which you would expect for him to put away. And it's it's not happening. We need the three points here. Oliver Norwood plays the ball down the right-hand side for Freeman, who's got the fresh legs after coming on for Baldock. And that was a highlight. What was that? And with only five minutes to go, we're going to get Lee Smooth set off and we're going to bring on Billy Sharp in his place. We're going to look to get uh, Luke Freeman off as well in that attack and midfield role. Switch him with McBurney and bring McGoldrick on up front as well. Change the two strikers. Demand some more from the boys. But with only four minutes remaining, unless something happens quite quickly, we are going to be only getting a draw out of this one, which will be disappointing. Norwood with a free kick. Nick Pope slips it. Oh my God, it's gone in. Is that... Nick Pope own goal. How has that ended up being a Nick Pope own goal? It was either Billy Sharp or Tarkovsky. I'm assuming Tarkovsky tries to clear it off the line. Norwood with a great free kick. Nick Pope keeps it out. And then Tarkovsky tries to clear it. And that didn't even hit Nick Pope, did it? Um, it didn't look like it. It looks like it just hits the side net and then goes into the back of the net. But with only two minutes remaining, we've taken the lead. And now, lads, can we hold on to it against ten men? Final highlight of the game. Referee, please just blow the full-time whistle. And there we have it. Full-time. Sheffield United 2. Burnley 1. Thank God we managed to get the three points there. We played pretty well. Even when they had 11 men. We actually started playing a little bit worse once they went down to 10. But a Nick Pope on goal. A very fortunate goal has got us the win. And let's let's just take another look at this. Norwood, Pope, Tarkovsky smashes it against the... Uh, look like the post or the side netting. And we managed to get the three points today. Very, very fortunate. Very, very lucky. But I will take it all day. And that sees us rise to 15th in the Premier League. Seven points clear from Norwich in 18th. It seems like we're keeping 
pretty much even points with the rest of the teams in and around us. We're not too far from Southampton in 13th. So there's a little pocket of teams there that we're in and around. I think Villa and Palace look pretty much gone at this point. Maybe not Palace, but Villa definitely. Um, so it looks like between 19th and 13th, two of us are going to get relegated. And I hope it's not us. Looking forward to the next episode, it will be Norwich and Chelsea. Norwich is an absolute crunch game, which if we win that, we might end up securing our place in the Premier League, depending on how other fixtures go. And Chelsea will just be a difficult tie against one of the best sides in the league. And then the episode after that will be the end of the season, and we'll see if we maintain our Premier League status or not. But anyway, if you have enjoyed today's video, please consider leaving a like, and if you are enjoying my content, get yourself subscribed. And until next time, take it easy. Thank you.